Hello, everyone. This is day seven of the GTC, the Google Teacher Certification. We are looking at a very short um, scenario of the day. You should be able to do this one in your sleep. Uh, but I do want to go back to sites because I've had a lot of questions about the sites that we did yesterday. And I want to make clear some of the issues. Issue number one. Um, when you look at Google training material, there are a lot of things that are old and new that reflect the old and the new. What we're looking at here is what is called the new Google sites. Um, the old Google sites looks an awful lot like, um, most web page editing where you have a button at the top that says edit, uh, add and so on and so on. As you can see, you don't have anything like that here. It's all kind of, you have to kind of know what you want to do and go over here to your tabs that say insert pages and themes. The problem is, and I, I again, e emailed and I got a response this morning. Uh, the test reflects the new sites. So if you're looking at the questions that I posted yesterday and you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't look like what it looks like on my thing I made, it, you can ignore it. Okay. This is the look this is what we'll be using. I want to show you a couple more things. Um, I think one of the questions had to do with commenting. There is no commenting in the new Google Sites. It's the only uh, part of the Googleverse that does not allow you to have comments. Isn't it strange? Now, the workaround that everybody talks about is they'll embed a Google Form, a survey, on into the Google Sites. And you know how to do that now. Um, and they put that in there on a page that says uh, comments here, something like that. And I tell you what, maybe we'll do that just to show you what, what we're talking about. That's the only way you can do a comment. Uh, I'm told that that is not on the Google test. So, you know, I'll just show it to you for your own benefit. But this is on the Google test and I kind of blew past it yesterday too fast. So I want to make sure you get it. When you're working on your site, and here I am, this is a, our site. Remember, we had to create one. We called it My Portfolio. We created a set of pages for My Portfolio. Um, and then I did another page just to show you how you can do um, subpages. So you can have pages that belong to just one person. That way you could have kids who have access to just that one page, and that's what they work on. Uh, they have the editing rights and et cetera. They can see everything, but the only thing they can work on is the page that you give them the rights to. But here's the part that I kind of flew past and I really didn't hit. When you're ready to publish your page, you click publish and you see up here where it says publish to the web, you must give that a name. So like I could give it Swan My Portfolio. So this is going to be Boy, that's a long, long name. Uh, that's going to be the address. So look down here where it shows you. It shows you what the address will be. If it does not accept this, in other words, it, if it already has a, a site out there with this name, it'll tell you. It'll say, sorry, this one already exists. So as you can see, my entire address would be https colon slash slash sites.google.com slash view slash one portfolio. Now, you can try to do it with a um, with custom URLs. And if you do that, you can play with it a little bit. But um, I find that um, if you just use this and make the links to it, it works just as well. So see, I'll publish it now. It allows me to publish. When I come up here, I now have access to the link. And I can copy that link. This is what I can put over into my Google Classroom so that it will take me to this web page from my classroom. And then, of course, down here, I've already put in the link that takes me back from here back to my Google Classroom. Remember, you can come up here to preview and you can see all this. So there was the link that takes me back to my Google Classroom. And then there's the link that takes me. Well, you know why it doesn't work? Because we changed the name of it. So let's fix that. So let's go back into here. 
and let's go to my portfolio and you can see here's the pages that we created and you can see there's John's page, the one that I made that would be his specific page. All that is available to you. X out of that so you can get back. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do a copy of that new link. Go back to my classroom. I'm going to edit where I had that announcement. And I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to put in that, which is my new one that I redid. So the, one of the questions is on the test that has to do with sites. Can you redo the name of your Google sites? Yes, you can. You go into what we just did. The trick is uh, it has to be still available and any old links you have to the old sites are now broken. Simple as that. So now if I come in here and click on that, it takes me to the page. If I come in here and click on that, it brings me back. So I have the ability to do both of these things. Now let's look at that way to doing commenting. So I'm going to go to my class drive folder and I'm going to create a form. Just a simple one, not going to get crazy. And in our form, um, we're going to call it comments. And we're going to say um, that we want people to leave comments here. Now, of course, I could get, if I were doing this with a group of kids, I could really get into detail here. Um, I could do all kinds of, um, I could have specific comments for some for specific pages leave a comment about the the people that are you know who have pages in our thing etc cetera, etc cetera. um do i want to have them change or have email addresses sure i want to know where you're coming from so i'll do a send and when i do that i can do it a couple of ways can't i i can either grab the embed code and this would be a good time to show you that again so I can go, yes, I want this embed code, please. And I'm going to copy that. Now, if I go over here to my sites page, I'm going to need to create a new site page. So let's get to that. So I'm going to edit my page. Did you see where I did that? There's a little pencil down here in the lower right that was for editing a page. And now it's taken me back. And what do I want to do? I want to add a new page. And we're going to call this comments. For our sort of web page. You know, sites is a web page. So I'm going to say done. And here we are. Now, if I come up here to insert, I'm going to insert a text box. And I'm going to put leave us your comments below. And I'm going to go to my embed icon and I'm going to put in the embed code. And I'm going to say next. And if I publish this, look at that, it's not showing it. Okay. That is interesting because that's the workaround that the Google site shows you. Fine. <laughs> you know, there, there's more than one way to skin a cat in this, uh, in this world. So I'm this time, I'm going to go and get the link. So I'll copy the link. Now I'll drop back into my portfolio. And 
let's see if we publish it if it does show up it doesn't that's fine i'll come back into here and i'll come below there is that link now this time if i go to look at it we'll preview it before we go flying out the door okay i have it i have it back now So that would take me in and let me leave the let's try this one too there we go now we've got it so we went in and we did an embed i can get rid of this We put it in bed using its email address, and now it shows up. That's the only way you can do comments on a form. I mean, on a, on a Google website. Isn't that strange? You'd think we just have a little place up here where you could click on it, and you would be able to add comments. All right, I hope I didn't confuse you with all that. Here's the takeaway. This is what you need to know. When you publish, the first time you publish your site, it's going to ask you to give it a name. That name becomes its address. To control that, in other words, you only want certain people to see it. You want to come in here and you want to say specific people can view. Now you can change that up, but if you have just specific people can view and publish, that saves you from having to worry about people finding it out there on the web. This one tells you that you're the only person who is the owner. This one tells us, we did this yesterday, we gave her, she could edit. So we asked her to come in and help us with this. If I come down here, I can notify everybody that this thing is ready to go. And of course, in the Google Classroom, what would happen is I would have this list, it would have all the names in here, and I could just go check, 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 and then I could send it so the kids would see the fact that the Google site is up and running and waiting for them. Okay, that was the questions from yesterday about Google Sites. Today, what it wants us to do, let's go back and look at that real fast. It says that Mrs. Reynolds is very excited to try Google Classroom this year. And as, as that should be as, she has heard nothing but good things. Open Google Classroom and create a class titled Google Foo 101. Um, okay. And make sure that you select that you're the teacher. Create an announcement on the page with Welcome to Google Foo 101. This is going to be a fun year. Add Miss Fissett, good old Miss Fissett, as a student. Okay. We know how to do all this. So let's go to our classroom. Let's jump out of here and go back to classes. And don't let this freak you out because I see everybody's classes that I have been subscribed to. But you always start over here with the plus and you're going to create a new class. You're going to check that box because you're basically saying this is for educational purposes. And then up here, we're going to name our new class Google Foo 101. Would love to know where they get this Google Foo from. Okay, I may have to look that up. I'm going to ask my friends at Mountain View. What in the world? Okay, and then I'm going to create it. It takes it a few seconds to create the class, so don't freak out. Obviously, if you're up to, you know, scenario seven and you only got three minutes left, eh, that might be a little scary. Go into people. Make sure that you are the teacher. Well, that was easy. It wants us to create an announcement. We know how to do all this, don't we? Share something with your class. So I'm going to share with my class. Welcome to Google Foo 101. This is going to be a fun year. Fun year or fun space? Fun year.
Alrighty. And we're going to send that out to everybody. Welcome to Google Food 101. This is going to be a fun year, period. Post. Now we've been doing this uh, ever since we started, so you know what to do. Second step, it wants us to add Miss Fissett. So that is GCE level one. And this time I won't forget she's a parent. And if it's doing what it should do, it automatically recognizes her and bang. Okay, you now have invited her in. Simple, simple, simple. Now, let's do something that's a little bit harder, but you ought to be getting to the point where this is getting comfortable. You're going to go to classwork. And remember what we talked about yesterday with classwork. We kind of went through and looked at these things where assignment is sort of where you actually do create assignments for your students. The quiz assignment, this is where it gets a little tricky. The quiz assignment can stand on its own or it can be embedded into an assignment. And of course, we know that now that we use forms to do that. The question is that sort of question you pose to the whole class. In other words, if you're checking for understanding, yesterday we talked about uh, how World War II began. Give, a, give me your understanding of how World War II began, and then you have everybody would respond to that. We talked about material. It's kind of like a folder that is out there that you can put things in that kids can have access to. Perfect example was our Google website that we just created yesterday. Um, it might be uh, access to the various templates that you're going to be using with your class. Reusing the post is exactly what it sounds like. You can go in and anything you've created from the past, if you don't want to have to recreate wheels, you can put it in. And then finally, topic. Topic, I don't know why the Google Classroom exam doesn't give more uh, time for topics, because to me, this is the whole point of the thing. So the topic is how you organize everything. So like in this particular scenario, it should have in here, create a topic, call it this, put in the assignment, but it doesn't. It just wants us to create um, an assignment. So we're going to create an assignment. And we're going to give the name of the assignment Google Foo. Here's the other part about this that I don't like. It doesn't really tell us. Um, to do anything in terms of the instructions, which to me is, that is the important piece right there, is that you should put in here something to tell your students what's going on. Okay, then it wants us to put in the Google Doc entitled Google Foo and you ensure that each student gets their own copy. Well, that's easy. So we're gonna go down here to add, we're gonna go to the Google Drive. And then we're going to look for that um, Google Foo and you. Remember this that we made. And we're going to just double click. So I got to do double click and put it in. But here's where it'll trick you. So don't let it trick you. Over here where it says students can view the file, make sure you go down, make a copy for each student. This is how you can create multiple. Um, give kids multiple copies of their own, excuse me, that's what I'm trying to say. They get their own copy, and that way then whatever they create is unique. And so I'm going to check on that. And this is where you can come over here and assign a points values to it, due date, etc. One more thing to show you. See over here where it says all students? When you have a class list, this can be broken down into the various students. So what you could have here would be the names of the kids that are in your classroom. Stop and think. So this is how you can differentiate. So you could go in and you can make two or three different copies of this silly Google Foo and you. And then you could send that to make a copy for each student. And then over here under the all students, you could go through and check maybe three or four that would be uh, germane to them, send it. You could then uh, come down here and pick another group 
that might do use a different one. And of course, all you'd have to do is just go over here and X out that one that you had just added. Come in, add Google Drive. Now go find the different copy that represents those students, send it to them. Also notice that if you're working with kids who have an IEP that says that they need to have more time to do their work, you can change up the date uh, for when it can be due. For the purposes here, they're not even asking us to do a date. It's really simple. You basically just come in here and click the date that you want it to be turned in on. And as I said, you now have the ability to change that up for different kids. Simple. The other thing that's really cool is down here, and this is brand new, and it's not on the test as far as I know, and that is the rubric. Now, this is just really nice. So it's saying you can create a rubric, and you go in here, and you basically start by giving it a title, descriptions. You can give the points. You can give the level title, description. In other words, you got to build it all. But the, new, the coolness about it is um, you can find these out there, and they're not hard to, you know, you add it in. And, yes, I know, discard the changes. You can go in, and that way you can reuse the rubrics is what I'm saying. You can build up a, a series of them. <clears throat> That's it. Assign. Done. So that's all we had to do for seven was create a new classroom called Foo 101. And we created a Google Foo assignment. In our stream, we can see that we have the new assignment is posted, which is the way it's supposed to work. And then right here, we have the announcement that says Google Foo, welcome to Google 101. It's going to be a fun year. Easy, huh? Now let's go back and look at, there's not as many questions. <laughs> I could find in this one because it's so straightforward. But if you look here, you can see this This is not what it looks like on the test. On the test, you have to move the pass where the dashes are. You move those up so they match up with what they're asking. So remote collaboration and teamwork, that's a digital classroom. It wants you to use compare digital classroom to um, the old way of doing things, traditional classroom. Filing paper-based documents in a physical storage area, that's traditional, obviously. Find the best online resources, that's digital. Storing documents in the cloud, that's digital. Working groups in person, uh, set hours to collaborate, that would be traditional. Don't want them tricky on that one. Communicating to a wide audience by publishing work online, digital. Planning uh, printed projects, pinning, excuse me, printed projects and wall displays around the school, traditional. One of the things that, that I try to do um, when I, in my classes is I try to show teachers the tool called a Padlet, which gives you the ability to have that kind of virtual bulletin board that you can put into a Google assignment. So everybody's work, if it's something that requires um, graphics, embedded material, you can use the Padlet to pin those up and you've got your virtual tour of the work in your class. What is an advantage of using Google Docs and Drive in a classroom? Easy collaboration with student and teachers, cloud storage, so documents can be accessed anywhere, saves paper, D, all of the above. By now you know that it's D. When creating a new classroom site, which of the following are not options? Don't let them catch you on this one. Selecting a theme, yes. Selecting an URL for the site, yes. Selecting a site name that is the same as another site, no. So that's the answer. And then, of course, selecting a site name. Flashcards. This is a good group of flashcards. I have to give, well, okay, I'll give you a five on that because that is a good set of flashcards here. Uh, how to sign into Google Classroom, enter the class code, how to go to a teacher's classroom, click on it in the classroom homepage, you know all this stuff. How to start an assignment. Hey, it's right there, what we just did. Uh, how to turn in an assignment. And it gives you all the information you need to know. Uh, and how to click on add comment and then post it. This is stuff that you know. You just don't know you know yet. But I think you are going to find that as we finish up this week, 
what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at more and more um, calendar-based things, group-based things. We've kind of left the, the classroom creating of things behind. So tomorrow, let's look ahead and see what we are doing tomorrow. So for tomorrow, tomorrow's calendar. And it's easy calendar. Um, we'll take a little bit of time to look at some of the features of a calendar because calendar becomes your best friend in a Google Classroom. That way, and the problem with calendar is it's really hard to get kids to pay attention to the calendar, frankly. And I'm going to try to get us a, a teacher this Friday who has a Google Classroom, has a nice Google Classroom, and let her come in uh, to our to our collaborate here. You don't have to be here for her unless you want to be here just to talk to a real live uh, breathing teacher who uses Google Classroom and let her explain to us how she set hers up and how she's using it now. I hope to have that for this Friday. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, 502-457-2937. Um, stay safe. Take care of each other. We will get through all of this, and I will see you tomorrow.